Teen dating violence can take place in person or electronically. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, millions of American teens are affected by teen dating violence every year. The executive director of the Marjorie Mason Center fills us in on what parents and teens need to know to prevent this type of domestic violence. We do know that nationally, one in three teenagers will experience some form of intimate partner violence or dating abuse, um, with usually the first instance starting at the age of 15. Um, the highest rate of domestic violence is between the ages of 18 and 25. So you're looking at younger people experiencing this in higher numbers. Um, and if you if you can correlate with the fact that we have about 63% higher calls than the state average for domestic violence, one would assume that our teen dating violence rates would follow that as well. We're talking about patterns of coercive behaviors that one person in an intimate relationship uses to exert power and control over another. So we try to talk about domestic violence um, in the way of power and control. So that would exist in teen relationships as well and we see it in a lot of different fashions, usually a lot of psychological and emotional abuse. Um, digital technology is really prevalent as it relates to our young people. They're so used to it, it's, it's attached to their human being <laughs> in their everyday existence. Um, which they are great tools but they're terrible masters and one of the things we talk about is really knowing your boundaries and making sure that you feel in control um, obviously your parents are in charge of you um, as a minor but as it relates to a relationship that you feel in control of even your your digital technology available to you violence is learned behavior so the more we continue wait to continue to perpetuate cycles of domestic violence in our homes, um, the kids are going to experience and exhibit those same patterns of behavior. I think relationships start much younger these days. And I think that the addition of technology and accessibility of information for somebody that is um, wanting to control another person, we've given them a lot more tools and resources to do so. Talk to your kids. You know, there was a, a study recently done that said 75% of parents think that they've talked to their kids kids about healthy and unhealthy relationships. But you ask kids, 75% of them say their parents never talk to them about healthy or unhealthy relationships. I think we're so afraid to bring up things or that we might cause behaviors. You know, we want to protect our kids and keep them in a bubble, but we want our kids to know that we are a safe place for information. So have hard talks with your kids. We have counseling, we can do case management. Um, I don't think people recognize, but as early as the age of 12, you can get a restraining order. Um, and so we wanna make sure that kids know that we are here to keep them safe, that we're not here to judge them. Um, there's, there, we're not here to make them feel ashamed that there wasn't something somebody does to become in this relationship, but we just wanna offer them tools and resources to get the help they need. For decades now, we've run a program called No More on Central Valley High School campuses, talking about health healthy relationships and how to recognize the signs of teen dating violence. They're peer-led programs, student to student, so they use real-life scenarios on what teen dating violence looks like um, in a relationship that they can recognize.